One, two, are you ready? Yes. Okay. One, two, are you sure you guys yes. can really shout it now? Okay, then I'm ready. Let's go see if you can surprise you. my heart like Jack in the Box did, okay? On the count of three. One, two, three. Thank you, Jesus! Woohoo! Why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. Good morning again. Okay? You know, before we pray for sermon, I have to confess that actually today was my first time. I mean, when I asked Christ is risen, then you said, He is risen indeed. I used to get that part all the time. So today is my actually, as a pastor, first time ask Christ is risen, then you respond. So I was really excited to, uh, to be here. So after the sermon, I'm going to ask you a hundred times more, all right? <laughs> Shall you pray? <coughs> Heavenly Father, we are asking you to pour your Holy Spirit upon us. So may you understand your word and understand the power of resurrection and apply it to our lives. In your name we pray. Amen. You know, in 2011, one sunny day, there was a ferry boat conveying 75 passengers to a port in Okinawa from Shikaku. And it is 65 miles long and one and a half hours sailing. And in the middle of the journey, the ship stopped all of a sudden and didn't move at all. But in a minute, 32 years old young captain spoke on the mic. Hello, passenger. We have some mechanical problem here, and it will be fixed, and please remain calm. We are not in an emergency situation. Then in a minute, the weather changed from sunshine to rain, and the wave of the water began to rise higher, and the ferry was swaying slightly. Then one of the passengers who was frightened and shouted to young captain, Hey, captain, did you call 911? We are rocking hard. I think we are sinking. Then the captain said, 911 is not necessary. The coast guard automatically knows our location. And also, we are now rocking hard. And rocking is good. It means we are not sinking. The captain tried to calm people down, but you know, if one person is skeptical and negative in a group, it gets contagious. You know, it spreads out quickly. Some passengers argue, you know, we have to lower the rescue boat. You know, where is my where is the chopper? Where is my life jacket? And my life, life jacket is not tight, it's big to lose. Then a little girl heard all this fuss and whining and asked her dad, Dad, are we going to die today? The moment the captain, okay, I had enough. I had enough. And he spoke on a mic, hey, passenger, no one is going to die today because I've been dating a girl for three years and I'm going to propose to her tonight. And I already bought $2,000 wing and a reservation in a nice restaurant for a candlelight dinner. And all the expenses were paid on my daddy's credit card. 
I have to pay him back. Then all of a sudden, the grumbling passengers cheer, saying, Hey, great, and clapping, and laughing. They say, you know, congratulations, captain, good luck tonight. And even some passengers came up to him and shook his hand, and one old gentleman even gave the young cap- captain a couple hundred dollars and saying, I paid my son's wedding, so I know how your dad feels like today. No more fear, worrying, grumbling, but joy and laughter. I think the young captain is a great leader, really great leader. Turn the worried passenger into joyful supporter, good leader. You know, this is the best description of a true Easter message. Turn the grum- grumbling heart to a cheerful one. Fearful heart to joyful one, the sinners to the righteous, the weakest to the strongest. Because the resurrection of Christ is the most powerful reality in the universe. It changes life, it changes relationship, it changes perspective, it changes my life, it changes your life. We all would be excited with the reality of His Spirit in this place. So we are blissful, delighted, hopeful, and wonderful. I say we are wonderful. Do you know the term wonderful came from the Latin word miru, means miracle. And the miru, miracle, came from the word, the Greek means mileru, which means tombstone. So wonderful came from the Greek tombstone. The miracle tombstone. Wonderful tombstone. So we are wonderful. We are miracle. Because the risen Christ from the tomb is with us today. His power is with us today. That's why we are wonderful. Miracle. When you say you are wonderful, it means you are miracle. Also, you have to think about tombstone. We are wonderful, miracle tombstone. But there are some people, even among us, who are very skeptical about the resurrection of Christ. They argue that he just didn't die at all. He just passed out. The funny thing is to me, the real funny thing to me is to me, they believe Elvis Presley and Tupac Shakur are still alive today, but Christ is not. It's just funny. They say Jesus just swooned to unconsciousness. You know, think about this. Christ was nailed to the cross for 10 days without drinking and eating anything. Then one Roman soldier cut his side and all the blood came out. Then they, you know, wrapped him up and put him in a tomb and blocked the entrance with a half-toned stone. Then two Roman soldiers were standing right there in a cage that people tried to steal the body. Then somehow Jesus awake in three days in the tomb and stumbled out of his wrapping and pushed away half stone or half half ton stone and sneak out beyond the guard. I think it would take more faith to believe that than the miracle of resurrection. But Mary Magdalene in today's passage is not one of them. She's more faithful than any other disciples and followers of Christ in the scripture. So I'll call her Wonderful woman, miracle woman, great woman, tombstone woman. Not because she followed Christ to the crucifixion or the tomb, but because who she was in the past and who she is now. That's really important. I'll call her wonderful woman because of who she was in the past and who she is now. 
I nicknamed her General Hospital. She has all kinds of physical and emotional sicknesses, diseases, and problems. First of all, she was a prostitute and considered as a loose woman. Second, she was possessed with seven demons in her body. Third one, she has some sort of physical illness too. You know, in Moses' law, this type of woman is officially called sinner and unclean. So when she walked into a Pharisee's house and broke the alabaster jar and put it on Jesus' feet and washed the feet with her hair, people call her, you sinner. It means she's a prostitute. She's unclean, impure. So she was isolated and alone. No one paid atten attention to who she was. No one cared for her life. You know, I think if she lived today, she would have loved the song, the Frank Sinatra song, Only the Lonely. Do you know this song? Do you listen to Frank Sinatra? Only the Lonely? You know, this lyrics goes like this. Each place I go, only the lonely go. The songs I know, only the lonely know. The dreams I dream, only the lonely dream. You know, I'm a terrible singer, so I'm not able to sing for you. But it's a great song. Mary was alone, isolated. Maybe she was socially rejected. But she was a sinner. Wherever she went, people automatically noticed that she was the sinner, unclean, impure. Then a miracle happened to her. Jesus came to her at the most vulnerable moment in her life. Jesus visited her when she hit rock bottom. Surprise. And also shameful. Surprised and shameful. She never expected to see and meet Jesus Christ when she at the bottom of her life. You know, that's our Lord. He doesn't make an appointment, give us a call, or give us any sign when he comes to us. He just barges into life and knocks on the door. Hey, David, I'm here. This is Jesus. I'm here. Then you said, what? Lord? I'm sorry, Lord. I just woke up. Please wait. You know, my place is messy. My kitchen is piled up dirty dishes. Please wait. You know, Jesus knows about all those things happening in our lives. That's why he comes to us. That's why he visits us surprisingly, unnoticeably, unexpectedly to see us being messy to see us being naked. No pretending, no disguising, and no pride, but with humble heart, broken heart, and empty heart. That's what Jesus wants to see. Jesus came to Mary when she was completely empty. So when Jesus healed her sickness, it's more than just a touching and healing her problem. It's a time she knew that her life as precious as other people. It's time she knew that it was not her fault having that miserable life. It is time that she finally realized that she's not alone. Her life is watched over by the Lord all the time. She is truly connected to him. And those scars in her broken life completely healed for good. He was gone. Her pain was gone. Finally, she felt peace. Peace. Have you felt that kind of peace? Ah, peaceful, like, ah, it's gone. My pain is gone. It's not the peace, the temporary peace. Have you seen a sign that says, 
dome backup or severe tire damage. Have you seen this kind of sign? You haven't seen it? Dome backup. You know, when you go to a parking lot, they put the very metal spike so when you back up, you got flat tire. One time in LA, I went to the beach and late at night, I was sunset time, I'm looking at sunset and a beautiful sunset and you know, thought about my life, thought about my family, I was peaceful. So great. That in a minute I start the engine, start to drive, then a whole Boom. Then, what's happening? So I rolled down my window and looked outside and saw a very small, tiny sign, don't back up. <laughs> I mean, then the security guard came up to me, you shouldn't back up. Then he tried to find me a hundred dollars. I said, what? The sign is too small. I couldn't even see that thing. Then I got two flat tires, that's $300. I was really upset and mad. Two seconds ago, I was holy, <laughs> quiet, peaceful. Then two seconds later, I was a mad man. I was really mad. That's not the true peace. That's my peace. That's a temporary peace. Jesus doesn't say that kind of peace. He says, John 14, 27, Peace I live with you, my peace I give you, I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. That's a true peace. Do not be afraid. My peace is with you. The Mary's peace, the sinner's peace, comes from Jesus' presence. No fear. The permanent peace. That's why she rushed into the tomb Sunday morning immediately, and she couldn't believe that her Lord, her friend, that be her only friend was gone. He was that who truly understood her who truly stood by your side, which no one had ever done that before. No one talked to her like Jesus did. No one cared for her like Jesus did. He thought that Jesus, Jesus was gone. He lost him. Then Jesus called her name, Hey Mary. Then Mary said, Oh, Rabboni, or oh, Rabboni. You know, I don't want to go deep into a theological investigation why she used the term Rabboni. You know, some pastors say that she could have called him the you know, Savior, Lord, Jesus, or Christ. But the reason that you know, she said Rabboni means it's a divine inspiration. You know, it's like a more than salvation. You know, she just lost her best friend. She just lost her, you know, the Lord. Then she realized that he was alive. There's no time to think about oh, what kind of word should I use? Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ? Oh yeah, the rabbi is a better word. There's no time for that. She just spelled out. Teacher. It was a familiar term to everyone at the time. Now Jesus was addressed as a teacher 60 times directly in the scripture. So the term teacher must be very familiar term to Mary. So she just spelled out, oh, Rabboni, oh, my Lord, my teacher. You know, my son Logan's middle name is a Shusong. So I call him Shu. It's a Korean name. Shu means rest. And so I often call him Shu. I don't call him Logan in my place. I just say, hey, Logan, what do you do today, Logan? Logan, did you go to school today? Did you study today, Logan? I mean, I'm sorry, Hugh. Hugh, did you go to school today? Did you eat today, Hugh? Did you study today, Hugh? What did you do today, Hugh? So, to Logan, Hugh is a more familiar name, especially when you are in a market, busy market, I don't call him Logan. I have to call him a hundred times, then he turned around. So I had to call him, hey, Hugh. Then he turned around. 
When I say Hugh, he knows it, it, it's daddy. His name is Hugh, very familiar name. So when Jesus called Mary, Mary just, just spelled out, oh, teacher, oh, my love, my friend, you are the Lord. I thought you were dead. I thought I was left out alone. I thought I was alone. Why is this story here in all four Gospels? All four Gospels record her story. Why? She's a prostitute. She's a sinner. Why is this story so important recorded in the all four Gospels? You know, this story is for us. It's for all of us. Living lonely and alone. We live in a lonely society, no matter where we live. Alliance is feeling lonely. Denver, Colorado is feeling lonely. Hollywood in Los Angeles feeling lonely. Wherever you go, it's feeling lonely. You know, we thought that we knew a lot of people. We thought that we understood. We thought that we understand the people, but we are not. We all feel somehow lonely and left out. So Jesus calls Jay, Mike, David, I'm here today. Who are you looking for? I'm your true peace, true love, and true salvation. You know, I said this story briefly in one of my sermons before, but I'm going to say it again today. Now, my dad often took me on a walk on a mountain behind my house. And <clears throat> one night afternoon, he and I started to uh, take a walk as a usual. But on the way back, I lost my dad because I was only seven years old. I was distracted by many stuff. You know, I you know, broke the wrenches and threw the stone and dig the ground. And then I realized that my daddy was gone. And it was also getting dark. And that moment, I was walking next to uh, for a lake, and at night, the water looked creepy and eerie. I felt like a you know, fish monster would come out and you know, take me in. But the, my real fear was not the fish monster, was not the dark. My fear was I was left alone. I thought that my dad left me there because I didn't behave in my place. Maybe I picked up my sister. That's why he left me alone. Then in the minute my dad called me, hey Jay, I noticed that he was just 20 feet away. And I rushed to him and hugged him and daddy. I said, daddy, I thought you, you left me alone. I thought you left. Then he said, what? I've been watching you in the last 20 minutes. I've been here all the time. Then he uh, took something out of his pocket and the flashlight, gave it to me. And I was thinking, oh, flashlight, flashlight. You know, flashlight my hand, my daddy next to me, and ah, oh, relief, relief, peace, true peace. You know, the message of Easter is simple. Jesus wants to give us the true peace. The risen Christ is with us today, right now, at this moment, at this place. You may go to a coffee shop, retreat place, go to worship in a big church, a small church, your walk, your office, your house, your kitchen, your car. You are surrounded by many people. You are alone. Christ is there, right there where you are. And his presence is our salvation. Saving us from our eternal damnation. Giving us our eternity, our salvation comes from him. So you have to know that. You shouldn't forget that. 
Christ's resurrection is our resurrection. The power of resurrection is our power because we are here today. We are saved by the power of his resurrection. The 66 volumes of the scripture testify for that. If you don't know, you are in a very, very dangerous situation. Christ is with us today. Easter is our salvation. It's a presence, forever presence is with us today.